This has been the most intense and violent turmoil Iran has seen in at least four decades. And many are left wondering what happened. As protests started to spread across the country, the government moved quickly to cut off access to the internet, leaving most of Iran completely disconnected from the outside world and making it really difficult for any information to get out. And now, as Iran is starting to come back online, some stories are starting to emerge and we're getting a little bit of a glimpse into what happened during those weeks. I'm Emmanuel, and this is Verified. Before he was shot and killed at a protest, 27-year-old Puya Bakhtiari took a series of videos documenting his day. Videos like this one. <laughs> It's Puya's voice that you hear in the video. It's November 16th, and Iran is experiencing its second day of protests. Puya is driving home from work when he encounters a demonstration on the Tehran Karaj Highway. These protests started when the government announced its decision to increase the price of fuel to generate money for some of the poorest families in the country. For some Iranians, this move was the last straw in a long list of grievances. Around the country, protesters use their cars to block major highways and cause disruptions, like you're seeing in these videos. Puya got caught in one of these about 35 miles west of Tehran on this major highway near Karaj. These videos were posted to his Instagram page after he was killed. A family member found them on his phone and uploaded them. That's how we found them and how we were eventually able to reach his father. We spoke to him on the phone and he told us more about his son. فقط به خاطر اینکه از حق این مردم دفاع بکنه بلند شد از تونشون مثال He told us that Puya had dinner at home that evening before heading over to a protest in this district of Karaj with his mother His dad sent us more videos Puya shot that evening These haven't been published online Here protesters are chanting and lighting garbage on fire In some of the videos we examine you can see protesters setting signs on fire in others, you see them throwing pavement pieces in the direction of what seems to be security forces. Trash burns in the street. Protesters try to create roadblocks. As the night progresses, the clashes between protesters and security forces seem to escalate. You can hear what sounds like tear gas being shot in the background. And you can see that trace of smoke in the sky. Video of his body at the morgue surfaced online. We blurred the video due to its graphic nature. Amnesty International, a human rights organization, estimates that at least 208 protesters have been killed. They cited credible reports. We asked Iran's government about these numbers. And in an email, a spokesperson for Iran's mission to the UN responded that these numbers were not credible. He added, the Iranian Interior Ministry is in the process of reviewing and investigating the protests and the violence associated with them. And the result will be made public when those investigations are complete. And in a change of tone, Iran's supreme leader said that any innocent citizen killed during the protest should be considered a martyr. To die a martyr is considered one of the highest honors in the Islamic faith. He also added that families of innocent bystanders should be paid a government stipend. Puya's father considers him a martyr. That's what he told us on the phone. But it's still unclear whether or not his government 
will consider him an innocent bystander or a willing participant. At this time, Puya's family is one of many that is still waiting for answers. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.